my name is Emma Finnegan, and we are here today with our On the Couch with Phase Wave. Woo! <laughs> yes, awesome. So they're here. They just played us a couple of cool songs, and they are cool people, and we like to get to know them. So hello. Do you want to introduce yourselves? My name's Holden. I play drums. My name's Carl Brobst. I uh, play bass guitar. Full, full name. Uh, my name's Matt, and I sing and play the guitar. I'm Zach, and I play guitar. Awesome. Nice full four-person band. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll get right into it. So um, you guys just hit a million streams on your song, Make Out. Did, were you aware? Of, hopefully. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were pretty excited, honestly. Yeah, how did that uh, feel when you guys realized you hit your million? Can I answer this one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, or Zach, fuck. Like, um, oh, I probably shouldn't say bad. Cuss for it. It was crazy. <laughs> it was a, uh, it, it was really humbling moment, honestly, because we made that song. Uh, what? How many? How many years ago? Four. Four years ago, and for it to finally cross that barrier of a million is just insane. Mm -hmm. like, we want to obviously make more millions off our songs. Our new ones, make especially. <laughs> make more millions. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was cool because. Um, we were when we wrote it we had like no concept of promoting music or anything mm -hmm. and yeah it just it was cool because it i guess just this song spoke to people and um it spoke to us when we wrote it so i think it was very surprising because i don't know it was crazy that that happened but um it was cool that it was just a song that we didn't promote because we didn't really know what we were doing mm -hmm. and then um and just song means a lot to me as well so that helps. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, it's like you see your baby. For sure, yeah. Get the recognition. Yeah, like we recorded in a garage, so that was kind of nice. A garage band. Yeah, say. yeah, there you go. I'm not hey. No, no, no. Awesome. Um, so, a little bit of backstory. What is, like, your guys' origin story? How'd you guys meet, like... What what's the whole spiel, man? We're from the beginning. These are the newer guys. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, they like, but from the very first day mm -hmm. it started. Uh, I played guitar and I had never been in a band. And I hit, I texted one of my buddies who um, was I know he's jamming with this drummer. And so he's like, yeah, come by and let's all hang out and practice or play whatever. And uh, just with the intention of playing songs, I don't know. Um, and then we were played it for like 20 minutes and then we realized we need another guitar so the drummer who i had just met um it's like this kid zach lives next door and zach you, you can take and then so we we just need another guitarist and then zach came over and since that day we just have been phase wave we just decided we didn't start with cover songs or anything we just wanted to make our music and um so that day we just started writing random stuff and we needed another guitar and then you can take it from there i guess yeah. Uh, when you came over that day. I didn't play guitar at all. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of just going, like, plucking around, you know, messing around, being terrible. Uh, we were making pretty terrible music at the time. Yeah, none of us <laughs> noticed. We thought you were good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then uh, as years progressed, uh, well, the two people that he was talking about that we were jamming with, they both went off to college. Still our super good friends. Yeah, super That's good cool. friends, still pursuing music. Um, but then we went through like two or three other players, like it just necess wasn't necessarily for them. It was just kind of like we were taking it seriously and doing things and everyone was kind of like, oh, I'll play some music here and there. And then we were like, no, we're trying to tour and stuff. Mm -hmm. And just, I guess, short story, that's just kind of how it happened. And then uh, as people came to <coughs> mind, just because they wanted to do other things, um, we found a group that everyone wanted to do this the most. And that's why it's, this is Face Wave, you know? Yeah. So. That's cool, and you, now you guys are like yeah. buddies. Brothers. Like, yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Brother Been with the group for like a little over a year now? Yeah, year, a little, year. I think a little more than a little, a little bit. Like a year and a half. <laughs> like a year and a half, maybe, maybe coming up on two years, I guess. But, but yeah, I started playing music a, a long time ago when mm -hmm. I was like five or six. Um, I played music forever, and uh, I met Matt my junior high school when oh, I was yeah. 16. I, I filled in for Zeb, I think. Ironically, when we were going yeah. through members of the band, yeah. he I, filled in for drums one day, and then we ran into I, we ran into each other as we were looking for a drummer. Like, you know, at this random at the Bug House, which is like oh, the old yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and it, like he was outside, and we caught up, and then yeah. after I was like, holy crap, how did I forget that 
I should ask Holden to play drums, and ever since that was then, sick. Yeah, the the one I covered for Zev uh, back when I was sixteen, that was the first time I ever played like any sort of show. Really? And after that, I ended up playing with another band for a while before I started playing with these guys full time. Um, but it was cool to come back and start playing music and like, like make you. We were talking about how Make Out hit over a million plays. Well, I remember when y'all came out with Make Out. Yeah. Like when I wasn't <laughs> yeah. in the band and I was listening to, it, I was like, dang, this is sick. Like I really like the music. Like. And to know that I played with them, like my first show ever, was pretty cool. And now to be in the band and have it hit a million, it's pretty cool. Cool, yeah. nice. Still touching on like origins and stuff. How did the name Phase Wave Stupidest come about? Story ever. <laughs> I know, but I love to hear it. Okay, me and the old drummer Zev were. I was laying on his couch, and he was just laying on his on his back on the floor, and we were just sitting in his living room, and we were emailing uh, the guy we we're about to play our first show at, and um, Tim Hall. He owns Jack Rabbits. Oh. his family, him and his wife own Jackrabbits, and uh, uh, he was like, well, I need a name, you know, and we just kept emailing him, like, oh, how about this, and then we were like, wait, no, no, this, we, I think we did that once or twice, and then Zev was just like, how about Phase Wave, it's, just, it's the name of a song by this band called the Cave Singers, and it's, uh, and then, yeah, just That's it. sent it in. It was, it just set in stone. It was literally just... How about Phase Wave? <laughs> I love that though, it's so chill. The day of the show. Yeah, day of the show. <laughs> so, like, what, did they have like a lineup poster? And yeah, they, I don't even names? remember what it said originally. Something Habitat or something weird. <laughs> I, don't I could find the email. Not right now, but I could genuinely find the email for sure. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oops. Yeah. Who's uh, that band we opened up for? I don't remember their name. Um, uh, oh shit, shoot. Um, <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. That's not far enough. Oh, we'll start, start off from the White Dwarves and uh, uh, something like Broncho, but not Broncho. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Okay, anyway. <laughs> All right, and then correct me if I'm saying this wrong. So your first uh, album was Lethological? No. no, how do you say it? No, no, that's not. That was our most recent album. Your most recent album. Okay, he probably. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> he probably okay, that off. was your 2018 album. Uh, Was Lethal? No. Right? Lethological. Yes. Lethological. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, no, we make more music. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been making a bunch, but yeah, that that's our uh, our 2018 album was Lethal Logic. Okay, and that wasn't your first album. No, our first was Melt. Melt. Okay, got it. Noted. Mm -hmm. So, and, and am I saying it right? Lethal Logic. Lethal Logic. Lethal Logic. So, what's your favorite song off that album? Okay, I'll, I'll I've talked a lot. You guys go. Everyone tells me your, your favorite song. Um, I would have to look at all the songs on there. I, I forgot what's on I there. Can, <laughs> I, could name, I could name like four or five that are on there, but like, I know my uh, Foreign Films is my favorite song on there. <laughs> that was another thing like they, before I joined the band. Like y'all, they made that record. Yeah, I, I'm the most recent one, band. honestly. So uh, I, I mean, we've really already cool. recorded like with this, this group yeah, right here. We'll yeah. talk about it in a second. Yeah, um, the new music we've done. Probably Wasteland. Now that I pulled Wasteland. it up and looked at it, Wasteland is probably one of my favorite songs. I think You Need Space is my favorite. Oh, you need space. Yeah, yeah, I think that's my favorite one, honestly. <laughs> cool. And so you've been hinting, you have new music coming up. So, like, can you give us a little mm -hmm. idea of what's going to come up in the 2020 era? A lot of cool stuff. A yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hands <laughs> down, the best stuff we've ever done. I don't think that's a question within the group. Um, yeah, no, it's the best music I've ever, I've ever worked on with the group, for sure. Um, uh, our manager, Eric Parker, brought in an awesome guy, Peter Fenn from he lives in Los Angeles and we didn't know him and he flew in and we hit it off and we just we did a six song EP and we're just working on that. We've been working on that every day and we've been making a bunch of content. Like we're we're filming the music video this weekend for one of the songs. Um, and yeah we're just working on a ton of content for it and so it's not because lately we we we're always working on a lot of music but for instance, we've been to Atlanta and recorded a whole EP, and we just scratched the whole thing. Oh, wow. um, so we're making, we're always making a lot of music, even though we release music, you know, kind of scattered around. Mm -hmm. um, but we're definitely working on uh, this project to have a lot of content with it, and not just be the music and some shows. We're gonna really try and like dive into every aspect of it, you know, with the videos and the live performances and the merch we want to make and. Uh, just kind of everything we're doing with it. We don't do a lot of a lot of stuff that we're re all really into. I would say. Yeah. You guys, I'm really excited about it too. Very yeah. excited. I'm oh, super it's... excited, and I think Carl probably in a similar way because it'll be the first thing released of Phase Wave that both of us play on, and that like has oh. our influence that we helped write. So I think it's 
uh, still like, you know, the phase wave sound, but with the influence of two completely new band members. So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And Peter Fenn was an incredible, yeah. is an incredible producer. Really good cool collaboration. He, he was just, he killed it. And we, um, he really like helped us open up and experiment and putting the, what was the, the glockenspiel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can yeah, call his xylophone. Yeah. <laughs> but all this no, ran random stuff that it like was nice. really, really cool. <laughs> and he helped us open up our, our minds a little bit to what, helped us realize that's what we we're actually trying to say out loud, but we mm -hmm. didn't even know it. And he's such a genius that, it, you know, we, uh, this, the songs just turned out a lot better than I was even ever yeah, expecting. Yeah, we, we went into the demos for this little EP with the, uh, Completely different songs, yeah, and they came out yeah. way different. We yeah, actually added two new ones. Yeah, and yeah. some we just, like, one we wrote the first day of recording, and then another we re yeah. wrote, like, a Zach and I started writing it in my garage, like, the week before, and we were like, this, well, let's just run this by him. And then we just jammed it, and then he was like, him and our manager, Eric, were like, we really like that one. So we just started to work on that, and it turned out to be one of the two of my favorites on the EP. Yeah, it's, yeah, called, it's awesome. called Holding On. Well, I don't know if that's really going to be the name yet, but anyway, yeah. Cool. Well, now I'm excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, I know you guys are talking about pulling out new sounds and, like, pulling out new things. What would you, if you had to put yourself in a category, which I know that's always <laughs> really, I, like, I hate it when people are like, what genre are you? I'm like, what if I don't want to be a genre? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, if you... Okay, two-part question. If you had to put yourself in a genre, what would you say you are? And if you can make your own genre, what would you put yourself in? Well, let's start with the make our own genre. Yeah. Because uh, on, in all our bios, we just call it mom rock. <laughs> uh, and our old bassist, Hunter Heilman, um, yeah. he just Groovin. thought about the yeah, Shout he, out, yeah, Shout out Groovin. <laughs> he uh, just so. thought out one day, and we I loved it. <laughs> so we just it's mom rock. And, but everyone, I'm not, I talk God, so much, and I, I realize Finish it. Finish your thought, bro. Everyone calls this uh, surf rock, which I think is so wrong. I think surf rock, I love surf rock. I think, yeah. like, the mm -hmm. old, you know, old Frights music and stuff like that, That that's like surf rock to me. And, and um, um, Froth, I think, has, yeah. is pretty surf rock. Yeah, Na uh, naming genres is so difficult. Like, like Dick Dale is surf rock. We're, 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 yeah. I mean, we have just a... What? What did you say? Dick Dale. Dick Dale oh, gosh. Gotcha, gotcha. um, but it's a very surf guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't think we're surf rock. I think we are a slave to our influence of, like, living at the beach, and that kind of, mm. s like, sinks into our music, and there's nothing in our look, I guess. I mean, yeah. I just have blonde hair. You know what I mean? I, mean, I, I surf, like, I love surfing, but I don't think about the ocean when I'm writing music. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, that seashell, man, it struck me dead. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. And sorry, I'll stop talking. What do you guys think that our gonna, genre is? I was going to say, I, I just think in general, like, naming genres nowadays is so hard. Because, like, yeah, it's so, so many people are branching out, and it's great. You know, people are innovating and, like, taking influence from so many different genres, and it's creating, like, everything else. So it's like, there's so many different names to choose from to like name your genre, but I think it's, I don't know, I think kind of what you're saying, well like, oh, I don't want to be a genre, like mm -hmm. maybe it's more important to like not try and focus on, hmm, what genre is this band, but maybe like listen to them and think about Ooh, what were their influences and like yeah. check out music that you think they've checked out and figure out like where that lineage goes back to, you know? No, 100%. I always think genres are a thing of the past now. Like especially like bedroom pop and like all these things yeah, or like subgenres, so like <laughs> there's so many different. Um, touching on that as well, what are your like top three inspirations? It could be in each person's individual like inspirations and such. Uh, for me, um, I would say Foles is up there for me. Oh, I love Foles. I love Foles. Um, obviously Tame Impala, mm -hmm. which is a little overdone, but I love them. And they're not overdone, just like people. Yeah, people overdo them. But and then probably a wall nation. Bro, right there how'd you me. miss the main one? Though? <laughs> Us? No. <laughs> no. I B, inspired big myself. B. Big B. Broncho. Oh, Broncho, Broncho, oh. Broncho. Sorry. I missed big that one. Big B, bro. Big B, bro. Yeah, they're the best band ever to exist. Yeah. <laughs> we love Broncho. Broncho. Um, musically, you know it's funny when I first like. The first band I saw that I saw live and really got into it was sophomore year in high school. I mean, I've been listening and been super into music my whole life, but like with my when my neighbor showed me, my brother showed me, and that kind of stuff. But when I first was like, man, I really want to be in a band, 
I went to Jackrabbits and I saw the 1975 open up for um, uh, the neighborhood, and um, and that was crazy because I don't know I, they they didn't even have the first album out yet, so I was just listening to their original EPs and that stuff was really cool. But I don't even think that ever bled mm -hmm. into like we don't really have that you know, that poppy sound and and I don't know like that, that I feel like a lot of the stuff I listen to doesn't. Like the play, way I play guitar, I don't know. I always try to figure it out, but I write the lyrics, and that stuff doesn't come from any other artist. It's just stuff that happens to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, I mean, when it comes to my bass playing, I would say the Beatles have a huge influence on the way I play. I really like uh, the smooth kind of grooves with like. I love his style of drumming too. Like I feel like we meld pretty well on the mm -hmm. rhythm part. <laughs> um, For sure. Uh, a lot of funk music, honestly, influences me too. That's why I like playing all down the octaves and stuff and getting those cool little notes. Um, cool. I would, honestly, like, a lot of Daft Punk too. I'm yeah. looking at the Daft yeah. Punk thing right there. <laughs> there he is. I love the way that they make their music and I really try to use it to... Because, like, he told me, like, uh, the other day, like, he likes my bass playing because it's kind of, like, it's just, like, well-rounded. Like, it's <laughs> not like I'm, like, trying to front out anything or, like be on top yeah. of everything but like at the same time it's like noticeable enough to be like cool it makes a difference yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's sick i think i think carl and i both are like really influenced by a lot of older music so yeah. like 60s 70s For rock sure. funk um me in particular joe walsh is one of my favorite songwriters mm -hmm. um just awesome every him his solo stuff and james gang stuff of course the eagles but the other stuff is some of my favorite um uh, John Bonham is a huge influence of mine, drummer for Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. um, and somebody we tragically lost recently, Neil Peart mm -hmm. from Rush. Uh, kind of music from that era is a, is a huge, huge influence on me. I want to add really quick. I, I want to talk. Wait, about let me let me finish. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you that long there, there, pause. There was, a, thought... there was a long pause, but then I remembered. <laughs> and also, a big influence is is jazz and like old mm -hmm. jazz music, oh, yeah. jazz drummers, because like all the good rock drummers that started in like the 60s and 70s like all of them were super into all the old jazz guys and mm -hmm. i study jazz myself too so mm. that has a big influence on me it's a jazz drummer um <laughs> can i go no uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i've really been listening to twin peaks like all day every day mm -hmm. and specifically their first album sunken i don't know i've been obsessed with that i love peach pit uh, yeah, Broncho, yeah, awesome. mm -hmm. Broncho, I love Sales, um, Surf Curse, um, Parcels, Parcels, um, holy crap, I don't know, just like, but yeah, I like, mean the past like, I don't know how long I've been, I think we can can't stop listening to Twin Peaks, <laughs> yeah. hundreds of bands that we all listen to, yeah, if we really Gus Dafferton, um, Strokes, Strokes, oh, oh yeah, yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. alright, that's all I have to say, yeah, awesome, well that was awesome, yeah. um, and so, uh, you play a lot of shows with Hensley. Mm -hmm. um, what are you? Do you guys have a relationship with that band, or like? I recorded their yeah. two songs that are out. Oh what? Yeah. Um, did you uh, record songs for them too? Who? Oh. They, yeah, like their upcoming. Sometime. Yeah, he did Clueless with them. Okay. I did Second Place and Give It Up, which are their two songs that are out. So, well, so I didn't know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I, I just have to throw in, I love their bass player. <laughs> yeah, they're all super cool awesome. kids. Um, yeah, they're all great. <laughs> they like playing shows with them and everything. Yeah. Well, we recorded at this um, studio called A1A Audio Productions with Chris Flowers, and um, Kendall, was, the singer, was there like doing recordings, and Chris had mentioned that she liked our music. Uh, and then, so I just met her one day when we were in there hanging out or something like that. And then Hensley started, and yeah, I mean, we played a lot of shows together. Yeah. And yeah, we're, we're good friends with them. Yeah, actually, I remember uh, the first show that I played with y'all at Surfer, uh, she like, came there like, really early and hung out with them. Yeah, we were, yeah, well, yeah. we're good friends yeah, with them. I mean, yeah. kind of was just, yeah, yeah, what's going on? They're all great. I think, <laughs> uh, they have, I think they have a lot of similar influence, like, inter or like they just like a lot of similar stuff. They have, they have a really cool, like, unique sound. They're all really cool people. Yeah. Awesome. And you guys are playing a show with them soon, right? Uh, February yes, 22nd. 28th. 28th? 28th at yeah. uh, Jack, Jack Rabbit's. Yes. Are playing that with us? Yes, 28th. Yes. Oh, Jack Rabbit's. Awesome. Well, I'll definitely want to see that show. Yeah. Definitely, no, so we, definitely. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, we'll be playing with Denver Hall as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Isn't uh, 
And Yellow Steve's also Yellow Steve. Yeah, oh, I yeah. love Yellow, Yellow Steve. Steve. I would like to say, freaking for the awesome. record, Yellow Steve is my Alan's favorite man, Jacksonville Stevie band. Steve. And oh, yeah. I mean, I love I love Runners High, I love Hensley, I love Glaze, all those guys. They're, I, I genuinely love their music. I just... Yellow Steve. Yellow, I, and yeah. I, I always, like... Yeah. I always like plays album. music out loud, and he always like. I remember one time we were outside at Jackrabbits, and I was just showing someone his uh, his music through my phone, and he walked outside. And he was just like, <laughs> and just walked. Right <laughs> he showed us a new track last night at a De- at a Denver Hall yeah. Yellow Steve rehearsal that like it was just super cool. It was brand new. He was showing it to us, kind of like we were running through it like as a group, trying to like arrange how we were going to play it in a live setting with a band and it was just like yeah it all flowed yeah, yeah he's on so yeah. cool and his Definitely. voice is just oh yeah, yeah. Voice, yeah. no like, I love so him cool. I saw him at like a house show once and I didn't know who he was and then I just like started listening to him on the fly and then I realized he wasn't like a traveling artist he's like yeah. from Jackson. he's like the nicest guy too yeah. he's so humble yeah. Yeah. he's letting us really borrow his VHS camera this weekend for the, the music video <laughs> awesome oh that's so cool yeah, yeah. man Jackson has a really good like scene and like community it's growing. feeling growing yeah. 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 Started it was sucked. <laughs> Dude, I was gonna say when I moved back here a couple years ago, uh, I moved from Tennessee, uh, Memphis, and there was like no scene here. Like when I first got back here, like I remember like I couldn't find anything to do on the weekends, like show wise, honestly. But then day, uh, the, you know, the whole the bug house and everything, mm-hmm. David yeah. Kennedy, that yeah. was awesome. That was, that was a huge, huge for the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Well, cool. Do you guys have any last minute like promos or shows you're looking forward to? Or uh, I know you're, um, you're shooting your music video soon, and that song music is going to come out soon, too. Yeah. So, our EP, Wisdom Teeth, we just decided on that the other day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is, we don't, it's, we don't have a date announced yet, um, but it's a six song EP with Peter Fenn, who was the producer. And uh, we're, I've never been so excited about any phase wave music so ever. Stoked. So First um, thing me and Carl will have played on. Yep. So it's, that's super <laughs> exciting. I want everyone to keep their eyes off for that yeah. and uh, some all the music videos. And we're just a lot of content we're coming out with in the beginning of this year. So. Cool. Yep. 2020 for phase wave. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much for coming and yeah. playing. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.